Hello, welcome to another video. Today we're caught fishing the River Ribble. If anyone's familiar with the river, I'm on the Tickle Trout Day Ticket Stretch. And I'm fishing really today for all sorts. I've got one rod out on a maggot feeder that I'm going to be course fishing with for sort of silver fish, There's some nice roach and dace in the river, and then I am going to put a chub and a barbel rod out, um, which I'll talk you through later, to try and get one of the larger fish, because I've not really caught any big chub or barbel from this river, and the river's got some quite impressive records for both species. So we'll give that a go. I've managed to get some rigs going that are sort of a, a bit of a bodge on carp tackle. This is a bit of a spontaneous session, but I've got something that I'm happy with that I'll talk you through soon, and um, we'll get stuck in. First rig, very very simple maggot feeder rig. I've got the feeder running on one of the matrix quick change beads, which you can see here, attached by a quick change clip, simple maggot feeder, running straight down to a quick change bead, if it'll focus on that. That allows me to change the hook length quick, and then I've got a two and a half foot hook length running down to a size 12 barbless hook. That's all it is. Very simple rig. So this rig you might be a little bit more interested in. What I've got is a two and a half ounce lead attached by the core change clip. Then I've got straight onto one of those running beads again. I've also used a quick change bead. Now this is 18 pound mainline. I've then got 15 pound coated braid, about three and a half foot. That runs down to a size eight barbless hook, which I've not list knotted and hair rigged on a single little krill drilled out pellet. That's what I'm going to put out there for the chub and the barbell. I might step that up to either a double pellet or a larger pellet as the day goes on. And I'm also going to attach a PVA bag to the hook when I cast it out because I want that to be among some bait. But that's all it is. It took me quite a while to tie up and I'm, I'm no doubt going to adapt it yet, but we will give it a go. First fish, love a little roach. Another perfect little roach there. Beautiful wild river fish in mint condition. Off in the sun. Let's get him in the keep net. Today I was lucky enough to see loads of wildlife including kingfishers, buzzards and sparrowhawks. I couldn't manage to film them but I did get some footage of this brown rat which came down to the waterside to drink. Once my feeder hits the bottom, I like to drag it back just about a foot to help get the maggots out and also to make sure that I'm trundling along the gravel bar that I'm aiming for. First dace of the session. Again, same small size, but we'll keep working away and hopefully get some bigger ones. Nice to see. At this point I decided to change the bait on the barbel rod to a double pellet because nothing had happened and I wanted a bit more attraction. Another pristine roach, not going to film them all now so I'll wait until I get something a bit different or a bit bigger stamp to show you because this river does have some very big day sand roach in it. Well, one of the issues that you have fishing rivers like this, especially the Ribble, is there's a hell of a lot of minnows in them in here. You can just see, if I just turn the camera around, even just in the margins, it's just full of minnows. A little fry and, and the odd stone loach, and that's a great sign for the health of the river, but they do chew your maggots up. So the way to combat that is with these little fake maggots, little rubber ones. Now, 
you may sort of worry about that because they've got no scent, they don't wiggle, but so long as you're putting live maggots, real ones, in the feeder, they'll pick up the rubber ones and that's what I've had most of the fish on today. Just a little tip. That filming wasn't great, so here's an example of just how thick those minnows are in the margins. You can only assume it's the same out there where your hook bait is. Well, I've had no action on the big rod so far, the chub and barbel rod, with a double eight more pellet, so I've thrown caution to the wind, and I'm going to chuck a 14 mil bloodworm pellet out in there, and see if that can break the duck for the last few hours. That's a slightly nicer stamp of days, so that's a beautiful fish. Let's get him in the keep net. One piece of advice that I might be able to give you is it's a bit if you're gonna go for a wee, just reel your rods in. That's the advice because we've all done it. You think oh, I've not had a bite for ages, I'll just dive in the bushes. The rod will go off if you do that and then you've got one of two, well we won't go into that but we've all been there, just just do yourself a favour and just reel your rods in, that would be my advice of the day. <laughs> that's, the, that's the kind of advice that the professional fishing channels just don't address and I think there's a niche I can adopt there, <laughs> that'll never make it through the edit. <laughs> We're going to finish up now guys because I'm, uh, I'm going to be running out of light soon. I've left the barber rod out because if that rips off at the last moment that will be a pretty good end of the day. But um, let's have a look at the silverfish we've got. I'm just going to pop some, some mesh down so they're not on this gravel. Well, there's today's catch. I know they're not the biggest, but they're really pristine fish. Don't worry about them flapping on here, they've got quite a few layers of mesh under them. That would be the nicest roach there. That's a lovely fish. And then something like that would be a nice stamp of dace. That's a lovely fish. But quite precious, so let's get them straight back in. All gone. Now, I didn't catch this, it's just swum through the mesh of the keep net and ended up in it. But that is a little stickleback, which is really good to see. I thought they were all minnows, but that was a stickleback. It's really good to see because they're a really good indicator of the health of the river, and they're not too common nowadays, I believe, sticklebacks that will pop them back. After packing most of the kit away, I did stay with the barbel rod until dark as I started getting some liners and I thought a take was possible. And in the end I did get one absolutely belting take but I unfortunately missed it so we'll have to leave them to another video. I hope you enjoyed this video, I really enjoyed this session. If you do please like, share and subscribe and I hope you watch the next one.